Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, for today's video, it's the last video in our Welsh tour. Um, it didn't go that well. Um, that said, the picture of the uh, the lonely tree of Lamberis is still a nice one. Uh, it's a day shot instead of a uh, sunrise or sunset shot, which wasn't the plan. Um, but it's still a great location and still worth a visit. So uh, I decided to keep this one in there. Uh, I'll show you the picture on screen now. So it takes about an hour to get from uh, the South Stack on Anglesey down to Limpadon, where the tree is near Lamberis. Uh, it's quite a nice ride and it just gets better and better as you get through Wales. I must say it's, uh, it's much clearer here than it was on the coast. Look at this. Spectacular scenery. So uh, you get this golden hour at sunrise and sunset times and uh, everything just looks lovely. The colour temperatures are really warm. Uh, photography in the golden hour is one of my favourites. It's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. So in terms of equipment, um, I find the wide landscape shots uh, always naturally gravitate towards the 15 to 35 2.8 lens. Um, a tripod is good to use down here, especially if you can undersling it, uh, get the camera as low to the ground. Uh, I actually took a few shots resting on the stones on the floor, uh, but a tripod is better if you can, um, and on the Canon R5 as usual. So today's shot was shot on the 15 to 35. It was at 28 millimeters, so it wasn't wide open. Uh, in terms of focal length, but uh, it was a fairly wide shot. My ISO was at 400. Uh, it was a bright scene, but I'd put the aperture up to f5.6 to keep it sharp throughout the frame. Um, and I'd also used quite a fast shutter speed, 1 640th of a second. So I could have dropped the ISO down and dropped the shutter speed down, um, but the 640 I knew was going to be a sharp shot handheld. Uh, the 15 to 35 is very good even if you do use sh slower shutter speeds. But uh, the 640, you know, you're going to be fairly solid. Um, shutter was electronic. Subject to detect was set to none, and we were shooting single shot as well. Okay, so here's a shot of the tree just as you walk in. It's easy to miss. It's only when you get around the front you realise it produces these sort of photos when you're in the right spot. Um, setting up the landscape behind is important. Um, there's a shot of uh, a giant sword up the road with the same background and there's the little tower you can see in the centre of the picture there as well. I did do a very quick night shot on the way out but uh, too dark to use. This would have needed a, a much longer exposure and uh, a tripod which I didn't have with me um, and I was on my way to uh, ride across Wales in the middle of the night to get to a tent. Okay, so this is our day shot of the uh, tree. Uh, I had no intention of using this uh, for the final shot, but uh, circumstances dictated that it was the only one I'd got that was usable. Um, we've got quite a few bright bits and dark bits in this that we'll try and level out a bit, and I'll probably lose a little bit around the top of the, uh, the image too. Uh, the crop itself will stay the same. I'm quite comfortable with where that's at. Um, so we'll start, I think, by tidying those few leaves at the top of the tree. So I've duplicated that layer, and I'm just going to lose the, uh, the top branches. To do that, I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool and we'll just have a couple hundred pixel brush, 100% opacity. I'll press Alt and click, and then I'll just pop some of the sky over these branches. I just want to uh, bring in the, uh, the top of the image a little bit. And then we will move to a harder brush just to give a defined edge. I don't really want a uh, soft leaf fade out. I just want it gone. Okay, so we've got a new top of the tree that's just a little bit lower down now. Uh, I didn't want that sticking up to the top of the picture there. Okay, um, I don't think we need to clone stamp anything else. Uh, oh, actually, perhaps this, uh, this person's swimming. So we will go back to a soft edge brush, about 100 pixels, and we'll just grab some water and lose them.
Okay, I think that's in terms of clone stamp. There is this little tower in the background. It's quite a way away. There's a paddleboarder there. I missed them as well. They can go away. Um, and that's quite nice. You can easily go up to there. And then you've got the Snowdonia region over in the background. Um, shadows and highlights we definitely need to play with. So we need to brighten up this tree and darken down these hills. So let's go image adjustments, shadows and highlights. And let's work on the foreground first. About 40% is where it's at with shadows. 31%, but the color's gone off. So I need to pull the color correction down. So that's minus 33. Okay. Let's have a look at the before and after. Okay. Quite comfortable with that. Okay, we've washed out a little bit of the front. So let's duplicate the layer again. And I'll darken down just the slate a little bit, I think. So we use the uh, burn tool, 300 pixels and quite a low exposure, about 20% and I'll go for mid-tones here. They were quite a dark slate colour in, uh, in real life. So I wanted to brighten the tree but I don't need the stones to be bright. Similarly these look a little over bright in the corner. Just tone these down a little bit. Um, I'm not comfortable with the colour that this uh, this bush has gone. It's a strange green. So I'm going to go through selective colour and see if I can address that. So image adjustments and then selective colour. And uh, we'll rattle through those. It's the reds and yellows that are likely to fix that. That's already better, taking the cyan out the reds. Okay, so that's fixed those colours. Just a bit of red and yellow tweak in there. Um, mainly the cyan in the reds and uh, same in the yellows, taking the cyans down. I'm not expecting there to be any greens in there really, a little bit in the tree at the top. Happy to darken that actually, I'm going to bump that right up. Uh, cyans will be the sky. Yeah, so we'll darken that too. Uh, we will try and pull some more blue out of the sky as well I think. So bump the cyan and the magenta up and then uh, you've got yellow and blue slider essentially. So I'm, I'm happy with, I think, all the colour changes we've made there. Uh, they're much more like how the scene was in the flesh. Um, we have darkened down the rocks a little bit too much, so I'm just going to pop a layer mask on. And with a black brush, I'll, uh, I'll just bring back a little bit of the, uh, of the brightness in these rocks. We'll duplicate those two layers and we'll merge them together. So we can roll back any of the changes, but we're still just working on one flat top image. Um, now we can go image adjustments, color balance, and tweak the overall color balance of the image. And I think I'd like to push the red sliders a little bit. So that just makes it a warmer feel. I'm not expecting to tweak these other two too much. Take a little bit out of our magenta slider. Add a little bit in our blue. So plus four, minus eight, plus four on the mid-tones. Um, just going to bump things up with curves, control M for curves, and just bump up the bottom of that a little bit. Okay. And then image adjustments, vibrance and saturation. The vibrance can go up 36, saturation, going to go down five so I've taken a bit of saturation out so it's made the colors more bold but less saturated okay uh, we'll bring up levels control L um, there's a lot of white in this image so we're going to pull up the tail at the left hand side by moving this slider to the right and then the center slider will pull back in a little bit and what we're doing here we're trying to keep the tree detail showing but we're trying to move the overall black point of the image up. So we haven't got this dead space at the front end. So if we look back to where we started and where we're at now, okay, that's okay. I think I prefer the color of the water from the original image. That was more realistic. I've got a bit too much blue in there. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna merge the top few layers so I've just got our modified image and the original image. And then I can put a layer mask on. 
and I'm just going to again use a black brush to paint through some of the layer below. So I'm just pulling in that original watercolour. Okay, so that's much more realistic, I think. Um, imaging is a tough balance between trying to make it trying to make it represent the scene that was there and uh, trying to make sure the picture looks as, as beautiful as it can. Um, unfortunately, I've brought back in my little border here. So we'll switch to a, a white brush and a smaller size. And we'll just uh, pop them back out again. I think I'm going to run through Selective Colour one more time. Uh, it feels like I can get more out of this one. Okay, so I think that's better before and then after. Yeah, that, that's more like the coloration that I was looking to bring in. So whilst it's not the time of day that I wanted to take the picture, the framing, the subject, everything else is good. Um, this is a target that's great in the winter months when there are no leaves on the tree and all the way through spring and summer when it is uh, showing leaves. Uh, I do find the best framing of it is low down and quite close to it, which is where the 15mm lens kicks in and becomes really useful. And I like to place the tree just in the uh, the divot of the uh, hills in the background. Uh, if you go at sunrise, the sun is coming up behind the tree, so that can look good, uh, especially if you've got clouds. Uh, plain skies aren't so good for sunrises. Um, so there it is, the lonely tree of Lamberis. So I hope you enjoyed that guys, not all the trips go to plan but uh, it was still a good day, still a good trip out and uh, I would recommend you pop down to the tree, uh, ideally a morning shot I think is the best in my view. Um, if you've enjoyed the, uh, the content please do like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.